Hi, I'm Stuart Lilford and I am the Programme Director for the Game Design course at the University of Hull. Essentially we do assume that uh, applicants to the course will know what they want to do in the games industry. They know they want to work in the game industry somehow, um, but they won't necessarily know what kind of career or what kind of route or progression. Um, so the way we've structured it is so that we, in the first year, offer a kind of taster of all these different areas that you could potentially move into within the sector. So that's, you know, a bit of 3D modelling, a bit of 2D art, bit of scripting and game engines, a bit of game audio stuff, uh, animation as well. And we kind of show you all these different bits in the first year. Um, then after that, you're able to then kind of think, okay, well, which one of those did I prefer? Then you can move on and kind of specialise in that. Um, we have kind of big group projects in the second year that mean that you can think, right, well, I want to focus on 3D modelling and you can work with another student who wants to focus on putting stuff together in game engines. Uh, maybe someone else can do the 2D artwork for that. And then kind of the subsequent years after that is, is about just honing in on that specialism and developing it further and building on those skills um, to make sure you've kind of got a very good portfolio at the end of the at the end of the course. It's a certain amount of UCAS points, uh, so typically you know students will do a level three in, in it might be game design but if not necessarily. Um, and as, uh, as long as you meet the UCAS points tariff requirement, then uh, we can accept you then. Um, alternative routes, so if you don't quite meet that, we have a, a foundation year just beforehand, um, just to kind of bring you up to speed before you start the course, uh, the three year course properly. Um, alternatively, there's access to HE courses that exist. Um, so within that, you can kind of do uh, something, something creative or something kind of IT based that would support your progression onto the, the game design course. We have done a lot of work with employers within the industry because we want to make sure that our graduates from uh, the course at Hull are em employable and they want to, they want to hire them. Um, and beyond the kind of software skills which are important and having a nice portfolio is important, a lot of them say that what's probably more important is those soft skills, so good communication, being able to work as part of a team, project management and working towards a deadline, um, presentation skills, uh, interpersonal skills, just being able to talk to other members of the team and things like this, uh, because ultimately you could be the best uh, programmer in the world or the best three apps in the world, but if you can't work well with other people and you can't communicate effectively, then it's it's no good. You need you need to have those things first. We have students on the course, and we say, right, well, this assessment is a presentation, and they completely kind of freeze up. Oh my god, I've got to get, I've got to give a presentation. And I, my, my the thing I would say to that is just just. Well, at the university, it's relatively low stakes. You know, you're just presenting to other students and the odd lecturer. You know, the, the, it's not going to. You know, the, what's the worst that can happen in that scenario? Um, what's probably better is to get as much practice of that kind of stuff as possible while you're in a kind of a safe environment, as it were. And then get to the point where you've got a job interview and you've got to give a presentation and you've never done, you've spoken to a room of people before. Um, and then you, you, you bottle it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's um, I think it possibly might be a barrier, and, and, you know, and, and especially I, I, I appreciate there's a lot of, you do feel anxiety when you stood up in front of, uh, of a bunch of people and talking to them, or you, you're, you're sharing your idea with a, with a group, a room full of people. Um, you know, I still you know, feel a bit jittery at the start of a new semester, um, but, it's you, you. You'll soon realise that at university, for example, it's they're all like-minded individuals. They're not there to kind of uh, laugh at you. They're there to, because they're interested in what you have to say, and, and they're interested in learning from each other. I think that's something we try and drill into our students from from day one. Um, you know, a lot of them come on with. Uh, preconceived ideas of what a game is and what a game isn't and we kind of we try and share that and think right well um, we, we want 
to see original ideas. You know, we don't want to just see first person shooters or um, you know um, all the kind of, like stealth games or all these kinds of things that we've seen time and time again. We want to see something that's different. Um, and so a lot of the times we you know we'll, we'll say to students about you know th think about games that have come from a, um, you know the developers kind of personal background. So a lot of them have. Um, you know, ended up being really interesting. So, like Pokemon, for example, um, you know that came about because the developer was a bug, you know, collecting bugs when he was when he was younger, and so that you know developed into this idea of okay, what if I was collecting monsters and what if I got to kind of fight each other? Uh, and obviously, that's why the first kind of a couple of hours is always fighting bug <laughs> bug type Pokemon in the games because that's what they that's what they did. Um, but that came from personal experience, and that led to that game. Um, and if you if you only end up looking at existing games for inspiration, the only ideas you're going to have are going to be unoriginal and samey as what's been gone before. Whereas if you can bring a kind of personal flair to it, I think then you can you've got much more of an original idea and something that's much more unique. I'm the director of the Game Design course at the University of Hull. We also have a Computer Science for Games Development course. Um, and so they, although they kind of interconnect at various points throughout the, um, uh, throughout the three years, they um, are kind of separate because one is very technical and focuses on, on programming. Um, the design course is much more kind of creative and design focused. Um, there is some coding aspects involved with that though. Um, and if, if, you, if it is a job as a games designer that you want, um, then you're going to need to know some, some scripting. Um, it, you know, we all like to think, oh, I want to work in the game industry, I want to be the person that sits there and comes up with all the great ideas and I tell everyone else what to do. But sadly, the reality is that that job just doesn't exist. Uh, you've got to be able to contribute some kind of practical element um, to, the, to that project. Uh, so, uh, for, to that end, probably, um, as in terms of languages that you want to know, we uh, we teach Unity, which uses C sharp scripting. Um, but if you if you've had experience with anything like Python or even Scratch, then you kind of you know the kind of the basics that you would need to kind of get you wrap your head around that. Um, and it's worth saying as well that we don't assume any prior knowledge of coding before coming on to the game design course. We deliver it in the kind of first year in the game engines uh, module. Um, we try, and, you know, it's great if you've got some previous knowledge, but we will take you through the basics um, enough so that um, you know by the end of your first semester, if you've made a platformer, you've made a Space Invaders clone, you've made a little top-down shooter, um, and you've got a couple of little projects, and then you, you can decide whether you want to take that further in second and third year. Uh, or whether you hate coding and you want to do something else like 3D modelling, uh, we get all sorts of, of students on the course. I grew up in East Hall, I went to Mallet Lambert uh, secondary school, then studied a level 3 graphic design at Wilberforce College because game design level 3 is a thing then. Um, and then I wanted to study uh, game design at university, and so I ended up going to the University of Wolverhampton which wasn't kind of the best of the choices that I had, but it's the only other one that my girlfriend at the time got into as well. <laughs> uh, we're married now, so it all worked out. Um, but yeah, I studied the game design at Wolverhampton, which was good in a way because it was close to a number of game studios. And although the university didn't really have any uh, affiliation with them, I kind of got in touch with one and asked if I could volunteer for a week doing something like quality, quality assurance testing or QA testing which basically just means you sit and play the game and look for things wrong with it to report to the development team. Um, and I did that for a, a, a company called Data Design Interactive which made shovelware for the Wii, like these really bad, really awful games. <laughs> um, but I, that meant that I had a little bit of experience to then apply to be a tester at Rare. So I worked at Rare, which it wasn't too far away, um, on the first two Connect, well, the Connect Sports games, one and two, um, as, a, as a QA tester. Uh, and that experience meant that I could apply to work in QA at Codemasters uh, as well. So that was working on uh, F1 2010, 
um, Operation Flash Point Red River, Dirt 3, uh, and body count, uh, all the kind of this quality assurance capacity. So um, it was great to get that experience of working in the industry. And a lot of this was kind of during my final year of university as well. Um, and because of because of my experience in QA and also because I'd done a, a week's placement as a designer for a company in Bradford, I um, I then got a job there working as a game designer making uh, or designing uh, augmented reality games for the PlayStation Vita, uh, which no one has played, but they were called table table football, table ice hockey, and um, table crazy golf. Crazy golf one was my favourite. Um, but ultimately I got to a point where I'd been working in the game industry for three years and I've never once had a permanent contract and um, it was all kind of zero hours contracts or three month contracts which they then extend another three months and another three months and then decide actually we don't want anymore and it's because of the nature of development um, especially in something like QA where um, towards the end of a development cycle they need loads of people on the project and testing it out every day for long hours because they want, they want to fix all the bugs ready to release the game and then as soon as they've released the game it quiets down a bit they don't need all these QA testers hanging around so they don't have kind of permanent, many permanent roles in that, in that position um, and I, I, I wanted a mortgage and, and to, you know, I wanted to be able to buy a house and stuff and, and obviously you can't get mortgage if you've not got permanent kind of contracts with reliable, reliable income so I ended up sidestepping and working into sales, working in sales, selling uh, non-ferrous uh, metals like stainless steel, al aluminium, copper, brass and bronze uh, for a, a stainless steel stock holder based in, in Leeds for about a year. Hated every minute of it. I'm not a person like I'm not a person that would like working in sales. It doesn't suit my personality at all. Um, but it, it meant I could get a mortgage. Um, but eventually, once I've, once I've got that. Um, I saw this job come up for uh, kind of temporary uh, uh, part-time work teaching game design at uh, a college in Wakefield, and um, I, you know, I'd kind of thought I'd not fallen out with, with games, but I kind of stopped making games for a while. But then I started doing it again in my spare time, and then I was like, oh right, yeah, I could, you know, I'd like to be close to that subject area again. So I started teaching uh, at Wakefield College at level two and level three game design, uh, their courses there. Um, and then eventually got more hours. And then I uh, worked at Sheffield College uh, on their uh, level three game design course where I became curriculum leader. I went there for three years and then um, worked. And then, and then I got the job at teaching game design at the University of Hull. Um, in between all that, I've worked for as a, I've worked in games as a uh, sales assistant. I've worked as a home shopping delivery driver for ASDA, uh, and I worked uh, at a call center selling pat testing over the phone. So again, it's not it's not a straight path. It's very much crazy paid in uh, career wise. But um, you know, I'm happy where I am now. I'm, I get to be around a subject that I love every day. Every day is different, uh, and you know. Meeting all these different students from all these different backgrounds and coming to me with all these different ideas, and I'm, and I'm trying to help them and support them get into this industry that I'm, that I'm passionate about uh, is something that I really enjoy. Just take every opportunity that, that becomes available to you. Something we do at, at the university is we tell people about game jams that are taking place. Uh, we tell people about guest speakers that we've got in, or trips that we're doing, or networking events that we think they should attend. And not all the students do that, but the ones that are there for all of them, the ones that go to all the talks and do all the game jams and, and attend all the events, they're the ones that by the end of the course are the most employable because they've just they've got they stuck into every single thing that we've that we've given them, um, not just about doing doing the work well, uh, it's about you know taking the all the opportunities when they need.